Se habla mucho del impacto medioambiental de la ganadería. ¿Pero queréis conocer la explicación científica y el gran papel de los veterinarios en la lucha contra el calentamiento global? Uniros a con VDB. Hi friend. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Cobat. Uh, welcome to Spain. Thank you very much. <laughs> Today we listen um, almost every day that uh, because the cows are creating methane and the methane is very is a very potent yes. uh, greenhouse greenhouse gas. So should be simple. Then because cows is creating methane, then the cow should be a, a damage a, 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 big, a, a big problem for the, for the climate. Is that simple? Unfortunately, it's not simple. It's actually difficult. And yeah. uh, it's not even a short story. So what you currently hear is that livestock produce methane gas. And because methane gas is very potent, is very powerful as a greenhouse gas, people say, let's have fewer cows. The challenge, however, is that methane is different from other greenhouse gases. There are three main greenhouse gases, and I will try to simplify this, okay? Three main greenhouse gases. Two of the three, once they're in the atmosphere, in the air, stay there for a thousand years. When you drive your car, what comes out of the exhaust pipe of your car, the CO2, carbon dioxide, stays in the air for a thousand years. When your cow belches out methane, that methane also goes into the air, but not for a thousand years, but for 10 years. 10 years. 10 years, one decade. So while it's true that methane is more potent in trapping heat from the sun, it's only in the air for 10 years. And that's the important detail that's always left out of the discussion. But this is so important that it shouldn't be left out because methane is not just produced, but methane is also destroyed. And the destruction and the production are almost the same. In the public discussion, the destruction is left out. And everybody only talks about the production. And that's what makes cows look really bad. And that is not well deserved. And um, how we can do uh, in, in, the, uh, in the livestock production to be more efficient, to, to, to to spread less methane. So first of all, what I just said does not mean that methane doesn't matter. It does not mean that methane is not important. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. If we keep our livestock herds constant, we don't increase the numbers, but keep them constant, then that means the amount of methane produced and the amount of methane destroyed are almost the same. If we increase methane, that's a problem. We don't want to do that. But if we decrease methane through better feeding or through different ways of dealing with the manure, if we decrease methane, that leads to global cooling. Global cooling. So anything that helps us to reduce methane will be a solution in our fight for climate change. So if our cows become more efficient, by better feeding, using feed additives that reduce methane that comes from the, from the stomach, or uh, using certain methods for the manure. If we reduce methane, that will reduce global warming from human activity. So farmers can be a solution provider. To reduce the, the number of heads in the livestock, Maintaining the, the health and the well-being of the of the herd yeah. should be it should be very very it should be a key factor for for that. So the veterinarian is a key factor for reduce this uh, this environmental impact. Yes, well the wealth and the, the the health and welfare of livestock is absolutely paramount. We have come a long way over the last few decades to improve the environmental performance of our cows, to improve the welfare of our cows, to improve how much milk they produce and the quality of that milk. We have a lot to be proud about. We have a lot to be proud about. But we have one problem. 
while we have really improved a lot, we have not really learned very well to tell the story of these improvements. And instead of farmers talking about what they do and why, we hear people who are very critical of livestock. And they always have the microphone. They always talk about it. And uh, to me, that's a big problem because um, the experts in this area, those people milking those cows and those people uh, being the manager of those animals, they are not the one that talk about it, but it's those that hate cows that talk about it. You've seen a lot of farms all worldwide, and uh, we have a lot of histories that we're not telling to the society. Well, I can tell you this. I do a lot of research in the United States, also in other parts of the world. I visit many farms throughout the world, many farming regions, and I can tell you what I've seen today um, you know, several dairy farms, but also a pig farm uh, and different facilities that process animal products is top of the crop worldwide. It's absolutely excellent quality from the farm to the fall. And uh, I think that this region here has an incredible story to tell and it should tell that with pride. Uh, what kind of research we have to say uh, that eating meat, stopping eating meat, is not maybe the, the way to, to, to stop the, the impact in the climate? In Spain, all of livestock combined, dairy, beef, sheep, goats, and so on, all of those combined produce about four, maybe five percent of all greenhouse gases. But those sectors of societies that use fossil fuels like oil, coal, and gas, they produce 80%, 8-0. So it's 4% on the livestock side, and it's 80% on the fossil fuel side. So we have to understand livestock has an environmental footprint. Yeah. Most everything we do has an environmental footprint. And we have quantified that, we know how much it is. And we learned, we have learned how to further reduce those impacts. But it's 4%. percent i give you one last statistics. If you were an omnivore eating everything, plants and animals right now, and you were to decide to go vegan for one year, no animal source foods for one year, then that would reduce your carbon footprint, your greenhouse gas footprint, by 0.8 tons per year, 0.8 tons. If you were to come and visit me in California, if you were to fly to come and visit me in California, then the one flight would generate 1.6 tons. Just one flight. One flight for one passenger. Only for you, 1.6 tons. So going vegan for one year would save you 0.8 tons flying to the United States once, 1.6 tons. So going vegan for one year is half the impact of one transatlantic flight. Thank you, Frank. You're very welcome. Numbers are numbers, science is science. And That's true. we always look for science to really understand and look for answers. Very good. So that's the way that we should do. I'm Thank glad. you so much. You're very welcome.